for anybody who doesn't know what the source meant to the world of hip hop, can you explain for one second? The source was like the premier hip hop magazine. It was the first magazine that really um, covered uh, hip hop, not just from the music angle, but really from the cultural and political angle as well. So it was a very powerful um, company back then because everyone knows if you, you know, it, it was like if the source said it, it was true. It wasn't, you know, you had a lot of fanzines back then. You did, you were able to get interviews from different um, magazines that were out, uh, but the source was really that first true hip hop publication. And so for me at the time, you know, as I started to write, I wanted to become a writer at the source or for the source. And working for this company, um, you know, I'm there, like you said, I didn't know how blessed I was to be there or how much information I was consuming and how relevant that would be to my career later on. I'm, at, I'm just kind of at Muse, the company was called Muse, like, when am I going to get a job at one of these magazines? I just want to be like one of those writers, you know, like, you know, those were people interviewing the artists and they became, um, you know, they really built their careers off of um, some of the best writing of our day. And so that to me was the goal. So I just, you know, I sat there at that job for five years thinking, although I love what I did, when is the source going to call me to go work there? That's all I cared about. And people would say, you're going to be there someday. Like people that I work with, like, you'll, you'll be at one of these magazines. Like the magazines were where you wanted to be. Not a company like Muse, which really for me um, was, a, was giving me a lot of knowledge that I don't think people, and I'm not going to take anything away from anyone, but back then I don't think people were studying it the way I was forced to study it in my job. You, and I'm assuming while you were at Muse, you said you were going to law school at night. Mm -hmm. When did you transition out of Muse and finally get a job in the industry? Oh, well, well, okay. So I think around... 96, I start writing for these publications. People, being in New York, right? Like being from the Bronx, I knew people already. So I had a lot of, you know, I went out. Like I went to the clubs. <laughs> Wait, let me just say, I went to the clubs. Like, so I met people, I, I, I had access, right? So, um, you know, back then everyone knew where to be, like depending on whatever. It's, I don't know if it's like that these days, but like, you know where you knew where to be on Tuesday nights. You knew where to be on Saturday nights. It was there was a specific crowd of people on the come up. And I somehow got into that crowd just through my friends, my affiliations, just you know, meeting people, being social, and that gave me access. And coupled with the knowledge, right? That opened up the doors for me to start writing for bigger publications because I knew that freelance. I could freelance. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I could get an interview with so-and-so or I would get along with this person or I could figure out, you know, like everyone in this industry, at least for us, right, is two degrees removed. If I don't know you, then my friend knows you or I can get you on the phone through so-and-so. And, -so. and that was the early stages of that, right? Like as I was meeting people and coming up, I was able to say to a magazine like XXL or The Source or Vibe, look, I can get an interview, you know, with so-and-so. And that helped as well. Then there was editors who I became friendly with, right? Like uh, Elliot Wilson, Carlito Rodriguez, like, you know, these were people who, um, Riggs Morales, like were like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, assign these stories to, to Kim. And I kind of got my foot in through, in the door with the source through Elliot. Um, then at, in turn through Carlito, Riggs, like I began building relationships with the editors at magazines. And then eventually, this was the big move, okay? I said, I gotta move to Brooklyn. <laughs> so in 98, cause that's where it was. In 98, I said, see you, Bronx. 
And I had to move to that area. I moved to Clinton Hill in Brooklyn. And that's really where the relationships started to take off. And I started to get my foot in the door. Eventually, when Elliot got um, uh, promoted to editor-in-chief at XXL, he offered me a job there. I went to XXL for a month. He wanted to kill me, and then Carlito offered me the job at The Source, and I took the job at The Source a month later. So, um, you know, that's where I wanted to be. So in January of 2000, I started working at The Source magazine. Okay, stop there for one second. Mm -hmm. Great story, by the way. Mm -hmm. XXL, what was your title? Lifestyle editor. Here's a funny thing, too. Elliot was paying me more... <laughs> <laughs> I can say the, the number now. It doesn't matter anymore, right? Look, I was getting, Elliot, I think, was, was, was offering me like 55000 a year. I laugh at it now, but I'm like, back big then. Big money. That's big money back then. <laughs> I was like, and the source wasn't offering me that much. But I wanted to be at the source so bad that I left because I said, First of all, I'm not a lifestyle editor, right? I took the job because I wanted to be at the magazine so bad. And Elliot had an opening for a lifestyle editor, which was, um, you know, an editor responsible for a lot of the, the content in the front of the book, right? So like content, I, I, I remember back then, like something I did that he really liked was like recipes with Miss Wallace, you know, like things like that in the magazine that weren't music focused but I wanted to write about the music. And when the source gave me the offer, it was to be a part of the music department. These are defined lines that people may not be aware of, but the source critiquing music was what I wanted to do. And so when that job came, it was a lower level position. It didn't pay me as much. I took that position just so that I can be a part of the music department and write about music. I love that you're bringing these things up. You're dropping so many gems and you are providing wisdom because people, they look at the paycheck. They look at this job pays me more, but is it really what you want to do? Is it really how you want to spend eight, nine, 12 hours of your day? And although you finally made your way into a publication. You're working alongside of Elliot Wilson. Elliot wanted to this kill is, me. Look, he wanted to kill me when I took the source job because he was building his team. And that, you know, he had his own history at the source and, you know, he went to XXL and he was now like going to take that magazine, you know, and try to really knock the source out of, of, of its spot. And he built his team and like I had just gotten hired. And once that source job came, I was just like, mm, gotta go. Yeah, but, but on the surface, it may have looked like you took a step back. Mm -hmm. But really, even though you were making less money and now being allowed to do exactly what you wanted to do, yep. you really took a giant leap forward. So please, if you're ever in a position like this, anybody who's watching or listening to this, you can't measure whether you should be at a job or you can't measure the success of a position based on the paycheck. You just can't. Go do something you love to do because that's where you're gonna accept. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.